Hey everyone, this is Anton. Welcome you to Anton's Take. So, first and foremost, I really apologize for the huge delay in releasing this particular video. I plan to reinvent the entire concept in my channel once again, and this time I'm going to test out with few video concepts. where uh, here on i will be attempting to review locations that are least known with a slight inclination towards its culinary habits that is food so this particular series will be about uh, eight different states that are in india you see these eight states have very less awareness inside our country and some people don't even know that these eight states actually reside inside india That's right. I'm going to talk about the wonderful and the most beautiful northeastern part of India. So there will be eight videos where each video will be about each of the eight states. So let's get into the show. So in this video we are going to talk about the wonderful land of the Donlit Mountains, which is nothing but Arunachal Pradesh. Basically, Arunachal Pradesh is the northeastern most state of our country, and it is also the largest of the northeastern states. It also shares the international boundary with Myanmar, Bhutan, and China. Arunachal Pradesh is basically a land with lot of rich traditions. Over 1.5 million people in that state belong to the five of the Thani tribes. Now, you see, all of these members. were said to have originated from their founding ancestor called Abu Thani now this founder Abu Thani was actually a symbol for humanity's struggle for food and prosperity even now they make it a point to remember Abu Thani's journey for rice and prosperity as a tradition in different celebrated festivities the thani tribesmen were originally excellent blacksmiths and miners who believed in non-violence but due to scarcity of food they started trading swords with the neighboring countries for meat and wool the entire region actually flourished under the monpa kingdom between 500 bc to 600 ad and later on the chutia kingdom actually took control between 1400 ad to 1700 ad and it's noted that it's only during these times that the area flourished with a lot of heritage sites You should also understand that Tawang, a very very famous uh, place in Arunachal Pradesh, is also the birthplace of the sixth Dalai Lama. Arunachal Pradesh is also one of the famous biodiversity zones where it has the highest biodiversity of 750 species of birds and 300 species of mammals in it. The state's primary revenue is from agriculture, orchards, handloom, and handicrafts. The state is actually a beautiful and self-sufficient place. It also has several hydroelectric projects since 2008 where the power is always there. So you can always expect the necessary electricity supply at all times. Arunachal Pradesh had smaller airports when there were no proper roadways connecting to the rest of the country. So they used these small airports to only uh, bring in their necessities like food and other related stuff. but now a full fledged airport is under construction probably stalled by the covid-19 situation but i'm sure it will be coming back one of the popular ways to reach arunachal pradesh is from guwahati assam there are many other ways but this is quite a popular way you can actually fly to guwahati and then take go by road or there's also train and bus services all the way up to guwahati and then you can proceed you can also take a helicopter ride from guwahati assam to tawang monastery in arunachal pradesh for uh, somewhere around 3500 per head this was an information i received from one of the blog posts in trip advisor now don't go rushing and checking out different star hotels or different resorts in arunachal pradesh you're not going to find them not because the resorts and hotels are not exactly well placed over there but the state has a beautiful system where they offer subsidy for home stays so actually you have a lot of homes coming up with home stays 
so you can just go to through their tourist websites or through different forums and you will find a different kind of a homestay location every now and then now there are homestays that fit into different budgets so you don't have to worry about it and also some of the homestays are really really beautiful the state has 26 major tribes so it translates to festivities you will have festivities throughout the year in different locations in Arunachal Pradesh that's beautiful right and the festivities are really impressive it's it's definitely a cultural thing to witness if you get a chance so how do people get their money well 60% of the members in state are all employed by the government. The remaining are actually involved in agriculture or local business. Beautiful, isn't it? Here on in the video, the points I'm going to discuss and describe are all thanks to the great blogs written by Krishnandu Sarkar. I have actually put up his uh, blog in the description below along with the other Bibliothink links. The blogs written by Krishnandu Sarkar, they are so in-depth exploring different paradigms and his photos are brilliant i really really vouch for those sites so please take some moment to explore it and if you like it do subscribe to it for obvious reasons everyone in arunachal pradesh always build houses in raised plains and also they believe in their own grown local produce so all vegetables and meat or anything you eat it's all grown and harvested right over there probably by the same person who is serving you the food. Also, you need to understand that in Arunachal Pradesh, it has a lot of villages as well. And uh, in most of these villages, the barter system still exists. That's beautiful. People don't exactly transact in money, but it's more like services. You build a house, the entire village joins you. You actually have a problem, the entire village helps you out. And at the same time, if you have something, you share it with everyone else. So it's actually promoting harmony inside the community. It's think about it, it's like a huge family, right? I'm pretty sure the case is same with all the villages, but this particular thing really impressed me. Oh, also, please do understand that I know how uh, different traditions and cultures are in the rest of the country, but this video is completely dedicated for Arunachal Pradesh. And throughout my eight videos for the Northeastern states, I'm going to talk for only those eight states. So please do not confuse that I'm undermining the remaining states. These states are really good and that's what I'm trying to highlight. Lately it's a habit where families don't even have a meal together, right? Well, I'm sure you all have good reasons, but that's not how it is in Arunachal Pradesh. Most of the houses come with the open fireplace and it's always a huge living space come dining or come kitchen where the center fireplace is big enough that you can actually sit around the fireplace and the fireplace itself will technically have layers where uh, the second layer they will have meat so you can actually have smoked meat and everything and in the lower layers you can actually cook food or however you like but you know what's the best part just like the american tradition go these people technically towards the evening when it's all dark they settle around the fireplace and they each grab a glass of apong which is a millet based beer it's beer guys so think about it they actually have a tradition where the entire family sits around the fireplace with a pong and just enjoy the moment that's what we need guys the weather condition in Arunachal Pradesh is usually anywhere between 7 degrees to 24 degrees now just because the temperature is low don't think it's going to be cool all the time you see it is quite sunny because you are closer to the sun and if you ever dare to actually expose your skin to the sun it's going to give a little bit of a singe so you better be careful it's going to burn a lot Arunachal Pradesh has a lot of tribes so naturally for any other state member to visit the state you need something called ILP which is called inner line permit the procedure is not tedious at all and it's not at all expensive it's it's nowhere compared to the visas it's quite cheap it's really easy you can get it done you can actually follow the instructions in Krishnandu Sarkar's blog he will explain better similarly like ILP is required for us Indians foreigners will also be requiring PAP called protected area permit in Krishnandu Sarkar's blog he actually journeyed to several places and one of the most beautiful places I've noticed was Zero Valley. It has a lot of significance. But before that, I really have to highlight this. 
Funny enough, not a single lady over there wore anything with gold. They all wore something called chaplet, which was a bead-based jewelry. You see, these chaplets could be anywhere between 30,000 to 1.5 lakhs, which is 150,000. Now, when he asked the locals about uh, gold or anything, funny enough, the older ladies who were kind enough to respond to him said that gold is of no value over there. Any time when there is a festivity, most likely a wedding, you can actually notice all women wearing a lot of chaplets. So the understatement here was that do not think that they are not wealthy. They are actually wealthy. They just don't value gold. <laughs> While we are on the topic of the Zero Valley, it should be noted that Zero Festival of Music is an outdoor music festival held which is one of a kind and it has been showcasing independent music in India since 2012. Zero Festival is noted to be one of the most eco-friendly festivals in India, employing locally sourced material for the infrastructure constructed by local artisans and made almost completely of bamboo. The festival has a zero plastic policy and encourages attendees to be responsible for leaving behind no waste. The event takes place between two to three days where the music showcase and party starts after the evening and all through the night. Whereas, during the daytime, you are free to explore the local places, including activities such as fishing and trekking. and drinks are all on sale at the venue which includes local cuisine and other cuisines including junk food. It didn't happen this year due to COVID-19 but it's definitely going to happen uh, next year and you can stay tuned for all the details in the official website. You can also purchase the tickets over there on an early bird offer or you can also purchase at the venue. So if you are into music and adventure, plan your next trip to the Zero Festival of Music. Now let's dive into food. You see in entire northeastern area, they have this healthy concept where it's mostly boiled or roasted food. In Arunachal Pradesh, it's actually a beautiful concept where everything is boiled and you will not find any specific vegetarian restaurants. You will always get vegetarian items, but they will be in non-vegetarian restaurants. So people who cannot eat vegetarian food made from non-vegetarian utensils, you have to be aware of this point. So like I said, in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, they actually boil everything and most of the time they use bamboo shoots. Bamboo shoots are known for their really pungent smell, but no, these people, they know when to use the bamboo shoots. They'll be so fresh, you won't smell anything they'll actually complement their cuisine. And of course, like we serve Pepsi to our guests, they serve a pong, like I said, the millet beer. And in certain cases, in locations where kiwi fruit is of abundance, they serve kiwi wine. Either way guys, alcohol is there, but don't go looking for the zing in it, okay? <laughs> if you by any chance go to the beautiful Mechuka region, the member tribe members over there, they have this delicacy called butter tea. This is supposed to be really delicious and unique that you won't find anywhere else. Now, when I imagine how butter is added into hot milk, I know it's going to have a different kind of a dairy based flavor, a strong dairy based flavor. But I can imagine that when you put tea inside it, it's going to have a beautiful flavor. And they also have few herbs that is mixed along with it. So I'm assuming this is going to be a hell of a unique drink in India. For all you chicken fans out there, Arunachal Pradesh members also eat a lot of chicken. You see, most of the food they cook, they will be cooking on the open fireplace, right? But they also put it all into the huge bamboo, sh bamboo sticks 
and they just slip it over the fire where the meat whatever meat you put in specifically chicken it just roasts and cooks within the bamboo where the bamboo flavor is infused along with the chicken that is supposed to be a very very unique taste For those of you really adventurous uh, when it comes to food, Aputani tribe in Zero Valley, they do not disappoint. You see, they make it a regular habit where uh, people in their fatty fields, they actually catch the rice stink bug. Rice stink bug. As the name suggests, it does have a foul smell, but it's very popular. They fry it, they boil it, or they even mash it up into a chutney and they use it as a side dish. It's supposed to be very delicious but with a little foul smell. Also, the local market always has dried squirrels, dried rats or uh, any uh, snake meat and bugs and worms. So, you can find all the adventure you need over there. But, these are just unique spots. You still get the traditional chicken and lamb over there. So, you don't have to get really worked up about the food habits when you go to Arunachal Pradesh. Oh, did I forget to mention they also have the famous uh, Naga Chilli? Well, for all of you Momo lovers, the Naga Chilli is also predominantly used in that red spicy hot chutney they make. So, the Naga Chilli never disappoints. The staple food is basically rice, fish, meat, uh, leafy vegetables. But the popular dishes you really need to look out for are Tukpa, Momo and Apong, which is the millet beer. But Momo and Tukpa, I'm sold guys. So let's deep dive into what the food is and how they actually make it. Let's talk about Apong. It's basically a millet based beer that is very popular throughout Arunachal Pradesh. It is kind of sweet and it's a black liquid like. It is created by actually burning shaf or husk and then boiling rice and mixing both the shaf and the boiled rice together and when it is less warmer, they have something called e-pop which is made up of rice and more than 25 varieties of medicinal herbs. These things are all mixed together properly and then sealed off in a container which is then kept for nearly 15 days. After which, when you strain hot water through the mixture, you slowly collect a pong. Now let's talk about the all India famous momos. Momos are basically a Tibetan based food but it's one of the most healthiest alternative and most delicious snack around India. Now making momos is actually very easy. You just need chopped onion, chopped cabbage, minced chicken, ginger and garlic paste, green chilies and the momo wrapping dough which you can learn from YouTube anytime. Now you just have to mix all these ingredients together and add a little oil to it and then you just Make the momo wrapping dough eased out and you add the filling inside it, seal it in whichever creative manner you feel and then you just place it around the well greased steaming pan and that's how the momos are done. While it is getting done for 15 minutes or so, you can actually make the chutney for it. It's just relatively easy as well. The chutney is supposed to have naga chilies in them but since naga chilies are not available throughout the country, you can always choose the alternative red chilies nearby. Now after all that is done, you are just supposed to serve it around and enjoy. Now it's time to go to our Indian ramen which is nothing but Tukpa. Tukpa is basically a noodle soup that originates from Tibet and it's still very popular across India but you need to find it in a proper Tibetan restaurant. Now making tukpa is also relatively easy and it's always a full wholesome meal.
when you're cooking all the vegetables and meat in chicken stock or whichever stock you can actually get your hands on the cooking smell itself is going to be amazing and that when it's boiling down to a much thicker soup is really going to sell you out on tukpa when the noodles are all done and added to the soup that particular flavor and taste that goes along with it you can actually taste the garlic ginger and the meat the fatty meat and the juices that come along with it that's going to be absolutely delicious it's not going to be too spicy it's not going to be too sour but it's going to have a typical unique taste and that is going to be beautiful so now you know how to make tukpa as well i hope you really enjoyed this video and uh, either ways you have to stick around for the other seven videos which will be about the other seven states soon now these videos they are all going to be tested in front of you so please let me know what you think about it and uh, after these seven videos i intend to explore outside india about niche places as well and i will be bringing to you different things cultures and food as already mentioned this video would not have been possible to many things that actually help me with the material content you will find all the links uh, that i actually went through in the description below so uh, do follow them as well and subscribe to their channels and blogs respectively so please like comment share and predominantly subscribe to my channel so this is anton signing off Thank you.